Uh, my name is Donald. Um, and I'm sorry for everybody who were at the panel earlier. I'm going to ask the same question I asked Doug Parker and uh, Sharon Alexander, because uh, I'm really interested into uh, the voiceover industry. Uh, and uh, basically, my question is, how do you guys feel now about uh, what has become of uh, feature animation? So there's movies, uh, not really cartoon, because that's still voice actor work doing the, the voices for that. But for movies, more and more now, they hire celebrity to do voices like... I, I use always Dwayne The Rock Johnson as, you know, to drive in names. And everybody here who've watched Transformer know that you guys can do the work. You guys should be leading those roles. So is it a necessary evil from your perspective to drive in the crowd? Or is it more of a contempt point in the voiceover community saying we could do these jobs? Uh, uh, yeah, we could do these jobs. <laughs> <laughs> I, there was one point early on I, uh, when I started in the 80s in, in LA and uh, there were like 50 people who did every cartoon in town the same 50 people and you, if you were lucky enough and good enough you could get into that group and there was a time where you'd go from Hanna-Barbera over to Marvel and then you go you know and you Deke? Just, Deke, yes Deke. And we'd, we'd do all of them and then at some point and I don't know exactly when it was, somebody in the profession uh, said, you know, I bet we could get a celebrity to do these voices. And they did. And a lot of, especially with features, a lot of that stuff went away. And then after a while, it became with, the, with television, too. So, uh, But it's it, not as present in television. Like, you don't hear... You know, like, I, I, again, The Rock did the voice for, I think, Cliff Jumper in Transformers Prime, but then after that, they cut his character because they couldn't afford him. So that's just, you know, another ploy to draw people, but then after that, they're replaced with better talent, basically, so. Well, that would be nice. And I will say uh, that from my perspective, and I'm being as, as objective as I can possibly be, uh, I think it's a casting dilemma, and I think if it's the right, if the right celebrity is right for the role, then so be it. And the the example I always think of is Craig T. Nelson as Mr. Incredible. I don't think anyone else uh, could be uh, as suited for that role as as he individually was. That was uh, brilliant. Yeah. So so if it's the right person, celebrity or non-celebrity. Um, then, then so be it. And if I put on a producer hat and realize the amount of uh, publicity that I'm going to get for my animated feature when my celebrity mentions on late night television that they're in such and such a thing. But if I'm in the perspective of a, a nine-year-old kid who's going to the animated feature with their parents, they, they, make, they draw no distinction. It has no weight that it's a celebrity. Um, so I, I, I think it's a big, broad answer, but, but the most important thing is that they, the casting community and producing community, should be tasked with finding the best person for the role, celebrity or non-celebrity. But it's, yeah, you're, I mean, you're not wrong. It's a reality. Uh, yeah. Thank you. Thank you.